Uh, hello viewers uh, watching us on BTN TV. As usual, I'm Mwesuga Mugwa Pasco, taking you in the science. Remember, uh, from I'm um, head teacher Wisdom Center. That's the Karumona in Bugesera. Yes, uh, last time we were here and we had different activities. And for now, we want to go ahead and uh, move on. We see that we cover. Yes, what's about to cover now? All right. Yes, today uh, we are actually going to look at a, a topic or a unit that uh, talks about animals management. Okay? Yes, we have different animals as we looked at last time. So, we want, yeah, we want to go on and see how we can manage them, how we can care for them. Okay? Yes, so I will talk about animal management. Uh, simply, uh, we can uh, see that uh, it's the activity of raising livestock properly. Okay? And uh, we can have also have a different way of defining, okay, uh, look at this term, animal management. And also uh, talk, uh, look at it in a way that uh, can be activities, yes, carried out to ensure productivity, safety, okay, yes, of animals. That also can be uh, one of, of uh, way of looking at animal management, yes. Uh, so these activities may include the following. Yes, uh, we can uh, talk of proper feeding. Uh, if you are to manage animals, you to care for them. That means there should be proper feeding, okay? Providing right feeds to them, okay? Yes. Uh, and then now uh, we look at uh, providing water. Uh, animals need water, just like human beings. Another activity which you can look at uh, in animal product, animal uh, management can be maintaining sanitation. It, this is very important. In our locations, also we need uh, this is very good. If animals, just like uh, other animals, talk about human beings, they they suffer from different diseases. Okay, but uh, once you call out proper sanitation, cleanliness of the the, the, the area where you're raising animals from, they will be free from diseases. Then I uh, also talk about vaccination. Yes, uh, this uh, simply uh, means uh, uh, providing drugs to animals. Just like human beings, animals also need to be vaccinated, need to be immunized. You should give drugs to them. Yes, this can help actually like in terms of the warming. You, you make sure that our animals will be free from this, they will be healthy. And then uh, when you come to this point here, proper housing. This is very important. Okay, shelter for animals. When you have animals like guards, talk about cattle, uh, if they just left outside, no housing, no shelter, they can easily be exposed to a number of diseases. So to do this, to make it better, to avoid them from uh, having sickness, we can make sure that uh, we uh, consider proper housing, no leakages in the, uh, the shelters of animals. And then uh, many activities you can carry on our farms, okay? So we can uh, move ahead, check on this. Factors considered when starting a farm. Simply, uh, when you want to begin a farm, okay, we need to look at different factors. Before this, you need to see what's a farm. Majorly uh, in agriculture, a farm can mean, can be just say it's a farm, a group of animals that would be a farm, okay? Uh, majorly, we talk about a farm in this case, we want to look at specifically uh, animals, but farm can mean different ways, talk about a uh, but for this case, we want to look at a farm in terms of animal management. So when you want to start a farm, you want to have a group of animals to rear. What should we consider? We need to look at capital, okay? Yes, yeah, startup funds. When you want to begin a, a farm, you want to raise different animals, if they are cattle, uh, if they are, let's say if it's poultry, you need to have some kind of a startup funds, that's the capital, in terms of money. Yes, it's very important to see that I will be able to support you in terms of feeding, in terms of uh, vaccination, in terms of uh, uh, providing security. That's why I need the capital. Yes, providing feeds. Come here, point to land. Land is very important as a factor which you should consider when starting a farm. Let's say, yes, you want to, if you want to rear, let's say, cattle, and you have no land, you have no big land, you should know, you should go for cattle rearing. You can go for another kind of uh, breed that can really, uh, let's say, need a small land, piece of land, maybe chicken farming, yes. Uh, 
less. So land is very important. If you have a big land, uh, then that would be good to go for cattle keeping. Let's come here, next point here, uh, water source. Yes, if you are to actually start a farm, you need to consider where will you get water from? Because animals need water. It's very vital to their diet. You have to add water, which is very important for their bodies and growth. Uh, then labor. Before starting a farm, think of the labor. Which kind of labor it takes? There are some animals which need much labor. So if you're going for such animals, then it's very important. Note that. Uh, then management. Yes, you should have actually uh, the administration. You see, how would these animals be, be managed? This will help us to keep proper record, records. Some people begin uh, farms or different business and find has no management. So in terms of keeping records, it becomes very difficult. So for this, this is very important to note. Okay, then you go to the next point, uh, the transport. Transport is very important. Yes, when starting a farm, is it easy to access, uh, yes, your farm, yes, from your farm, let's say you want to transport uh, your product or produce to the market, how is, how, how is transport? Do it is, you have some roads within your farm or just near your farm, that's very important, think about the transport means, and then uh, check food, this is very important, for starting a farm, when you see, uh, yes, if you go on that you want to realize, say, maybe a uh, cartridge, think of the kind of feed that will provide to your animals if it's easy to access them. Either be commercial or non commercial. This is very important. And then uh, another point here breed of animal rare. It's very crucial to think of the breed you rare. Yes, if somebody has uh, a farm, you can't just begin, let's say, buying a. Uh, you buy, you buy feed, you get feeds, you get labor, you think of the market before the breed. The breed is very important. We think of, yes, which better breed should we rear that uh, will have market? It's very important. When we go on, we shall look at, uh, to understand more about a breed, but simpler breed can mean uh, a group of animals with similar characteristics. Yes, those can be breeds. So we shall look at uh, different breeds. Yeah, uh, we can check the next point here. Conditions of a good farm. Yes, we have looked at the factors of starting a farm. Yes, now you start a farm. You are now in Nigeria to begin your farm. Then you need to check on how should your farm look like. The qualities of a good farm. A good farm should have well-constructed shelters or should have good housing. This is very important. Yes, where uh, if it's a cow, if it's a, uh, if it's a chicken coop, okay, you want to raise different animals, think of uh, the shelter. Then uh, uh, a good farm should be well fenced. In the case you, let's say, rearing cattle, you need a good fencing. Yes, if it's a full range system, but it's also uh, you're going to base on uh, uh, the kind of your land. So fencing is very important. Uh, to avoid wrangles with neighbors and the protection of your animals. Should you have enough space for feeding? Yes, you should have enough space for feeding animals. So group or may all partition your land in case you go and trail, let's say, cattle, if it's, uh, uh, let's say, poultry. Yes, within your farm, have enough space for feeding the animals. Not all the, the, the land, so you should classify this and partition your land in feeding parts, uh, then uh, where they rest from. It's very important, not, very good note of that. Yes, we can uh, move on and uh, check, uh, look at more. Yes, roads for easy movement within your farm. Yes, it's very important. Note that uh, you have roads where you can easily move to go to different uh, uh, portions. If you have areas where they are feed, fed from, Areas where, let's say, they are vaccinated from, there should be path within your farm. Uh, proper storage, or all, all proper store of equipment. Keeping equipment, yes, tools that you use on your farm, shouldn't be just littered on the farm after work, after using them, should be kept uh, safely. Then uh, we look at the next point here, space for waste disposal. A good farm 
should have proper space for waste disposal. Yes, not just littering on around, because these wastes can be used as manure. So, collected droppings, keep them in a given space. That would be a waste disposal to be better. And uh, this can take us to the next point. Uh, a good farm should have a space for keeping farm records. Less maybe the administration should have where they keep their records. Uh, in case you want to, let's say this time or this season, you didn't do well, you can compare the next season and then see where to change and or to modify. That's why it's very important to keep records. A good farm should be free from these vectors. Yes, from primary, it's not about vectors. Uh, just uh, can be, uh, can vectors, yes, can be living organisms that spread diseases. Yeah, the number of vectors that can attack your animals on the farm. So the good f should you make sure that your farm is free from vectors. This can be done by, uh, by disinfection, uh, yes, spraying uh, insecticides on your, on your, on your farm to kill different vectors. Yes, you talk about things like I have sesa flies, you find the ticks. Yes, yeah, those ones find that they affect so much, they spread diseases. So it's better to think about uh, uh, this free environment. Yes, this can take us to the next part, as the local and exotic breeds. Yes, we have different groups of animals, so we can look at uh, in this way. When grouping breeds, we have breeds that are local and exotic. So uh, here, probably looking at exotic breeds, sorry, the local breeds of animals, these are animals that are indigenous. So you can simply say local breeds of animals are indigenous animals or are animals originating from our local areas. Probably uh, when you talk about local breeds, these are native breeds. Native originating from a local environment. So simply uh, define local breeds as animals originating from our local areas. Yes. When you come to the other side of exotic breeds of animals, these actually can also be called imported breeds, okay? Exotic breeds are animals uh, which actually originate from foreign countries. That's why if we can come check on uh, ourselves here, yes, uh, local breeds. Let's go back and check properly. Uh, talk of local breeds, okay? These can also be called uh, indigenous breeds, okay? Simply, you can call them indigenous, okay? Indigenous breeds, uh, okay? We can still call them native breeds. Native breeds, yes? And then when you go to the exoticos, I've got different names. It's quite good to identify this. Uh, for the uh, exotic breeds, exotic breeds, we can also call them imported breeds. Imported breeds. We can also refer them to imported breeds. Still, we can also have another term here, referring to exotic breeds. Can be you can call them foreign breeds, foreign, foreign breeds. This is referring to breeds from uh, outside our countries, from other countries, different from native. Okay, yes. So that gives us a clear identification. Yes. So uh, we can move on. Having identified different names which we can give these animals, we said local breeds can be called uh, indigenous breeds, can be called native breeds. And then exotic, we said we can, yes, refer them to imported breeds. We can refer still to foreign breeds, breeds from different or from other countries. Okay? Yes. So this can take us to the next point or next part where you have to look at uh, characteristics okay, of these breeds, the local and exotic. It's quite very important, not the features. These features, major external or internal features, help us to identify these animals properly. 
so uh, looking at this side, you can check on the local breeds, comparing the with the exotic breeds. Okay? The local breeds here, we say that uh, they, uh, they have slow growth. Majorly, if you look at local breeds, they don't take, uh, they take long to grow. Their growth is really very low compared to the, the exotic ones. For exotic breeds, you grow faster. Okay? If, here it takes, if, if you find that, uh, like compare cattle breed of three months, which is local, and the one of three months, which is exotic, you can find that these ones they will be of bigger size. They grow faster. Okay? They are different. Then uh, we talk of next point. Uh, local breeds are small in size. Probably, yeah, it's very common. I just check on them, find a small in size. When it comes to la exotic breeds, these are large in size. Very big, okay? And then uh, still come back to local breeds. They are resistant to tick-borne diseases. Major, this is actually an advantage to local breeds. You find that for them are uh, like tick-borne diseases, check out. Uh, these which are which are spread by ticks. Talk about uh, uh, these diseases, okay? You find that uh, uh, the hot water, red water. We shall look at most of them, okay? Which attack animals in general, okay? You find that uh, these the East Coast fever. All those are tick bones that they are spread by ticks. Yes, you find that these they can't be either attacked by such diseases, okay? But when you check on the exotic breeds. These are less resistant, okay? There's less resistance to tick-borne diseases. You find that uh, they can be either attacked by East Coast fever, by uh, uh, hot water, red water, very many, number of them. So you find that uh, it's very important to note this. When you're going to rear animals, check, okay? If you be at the capacity to manage uh, both the vaccination of animals to avoid these, these diseases. And then... When you check, again, you find that local breeds are resistant to harsh climate, strong climate, or strong, we find that there's a strong kind of, 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 of hate uh, around, okay? You find that it's very quite hard in other animals. But for local breeds, riding them in desert is quite easy, yes? Yes, they can be resistant to harsh climate. When you go the side of exotic breeds, they are less, there's less resistance to harsh climate. They are not resistant all that. You find that uh, they need a cool environment. So you find that uh, if you are trailer exotic breeds, you need to have well-structured okay, houses or buildings that are really be good shelters for them to avoid uh, harsh climate like sunlight, strong light, uh, heat. Okay, you should be put even in air conditioners within these animals. The, the exotic ones need good environment and the local ones. Check uh, our next point on productivity. Uh, within lock breeds, we say low productivity, meaning they produce low. For example, if it's the meat, they put on less meat, okay? And then if they are eggs, if they are birds, they would lay few eggs, okay? Check in terms of milk production. You can find local breed like uh, two liters, three liters, okay? When you go this side of exotic breeds, high production, they produce more and faster. If you check in terms of milk production, an exotic breed, let's say in terms, let's say if you talk about the cut of race, like forations, like can find a day can have 20 liters. If you check the local ones here, maybe three liters a day, you find that uh, it's very different. Check in terms of, uh, uh, of, let's say in case they are brats, okay, rearing chicken, you have, can have more eggs here and bigger in size. Here, there will be few eggs. In terms of meat production, you have more meat. Okay? Checking or looking at uh, exotic breeds. So you can say high production. Very important to note. Uh, when you check, they say the next point, need less labor. This can be an advantage to the local breeds. Local breeds, and local breeds here you find that... Uh, they need less labor. One can just uh, actually uh, have the, if they are goats, if they are if they are cattle, can just consider use of the free range system. They can graze on their own. Okay, have just one herd. Man, look at cattle is quite easy. But when you come at uh, this side of the local breed, the exotic breeds, yes, the uh, next point also which can also be our uh, advantage. You can say resistant to harsh climate. It's very important. And then 
need less labor. So you can see these three points can also be used as an advantage. When you go to more advantages still of exotic breeds, we can say grow faster, yes, very good. Large in size, which is also not bad. Uh, this is a disadvantage. Come to, yes, come to high production. It's an advantage. Okay, so also can find also more three advantages, okay, of raising exotic breeds. Yes, so we look at these advantages also very clear, and uh, this table can take us to the next point. We have to note this, a breed is a group of animals with similar characteristics. They can be cattle breeds, they can be rabbit breeds, or a breed of goats, breeds of chicken, which is poultry, a breed of sheep, okay? Uh, yes, this is very important, okay? Yeah, so simply to understand, look at a breed, we say that a, a breed is just a group of animals with the similar features, okay? That's a bear breed. That's what you can say. If we say local breeds, they have got similar features. If you say exotic breeds, they have got similar features. So it's a group of animals, okay? Uh, so this can take us uh, uh, to the end of our lesson today. Yes, uh, we have looked at uh, different activities, okay? We have seen, uh, we have grouped animals, okay? Yeah, looking at, uh, we've looked at animal management, which was very important to see that uh, mostly uh, we find that if we are to care for our animals, we need to look at which, different, uh, which activities do we need to consider. In the animal management, we found that uh, we looked at practices which we are ensured to make sure that there is high productivity, there is safety for animals, okay? Uh, there's good health for animals. Those factors which we looked at are very important, and uh, also I uh, went ahead looking at uh, the local breeds and exotic breeds. This is very important to note. So please, uh, when uh, okay, you check, we find that uh, local breeds have the advantages, and their side also, exotic breeds also have advantages. So what you need to just see, we have to choose a good breed rare. If you want local or exotic, check. Look at uh, the capacity, the whole feeding. If you're able to feed local ones, then go for those. If you're able to feed the exotic breeds, it will be better because you see they have high productivity. Yeah, so uh, we want to end here for this time. And since you have looked at different animals, you are about the productivity, name it. It's very important to note that. As we come back next time, we shall go ahead and look at different breeds of animals. Let us end here for this time. We, pro we will be getting more questions to answer. Uh, check on uh, YouTube uh, channels. Check on, uh, actually, follow us on uh, B10 TV. You'll be getting different questions, so revision work. Check on our website. That's the Wisdom Center website. WhatsApp groups, you can access them. Yes, it's possible. Yes, you can have different activities and go through, check on yourself. But as we come back next time, shall be at Thank you. Nice time.